in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed now when the bible tells you something made everything you should respect it are we together now yes that all things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made without him without the word was not anything made that was made without the word was not any destiny that was made without the word was not any life that was made without the word was not any man of god that was made that means when you have the word you have the ability to manipulate anything created by the word are we together now when the bible tells you he wants to give you what created the heavens and the earth it means that he's giving you access is a scepter of dominion that with this word when he grants it unto you then you will be able to tame life and operate at a dimension and at a frequency that will dumbfound principalities and powers now truthfully speaking it may take a while you see because God is not a magician. It's a system. That means your participation is required. But that line upon line. My brothers and my sisters, let me give you a guarantee. And I tell you this in the name of the Lord. If you listen to the things that I teach you. And you open up your heart in all sincerity to receive. There is no power in existence that sustains the ability to put down your destiny. It's a matter of time. Forget about the things you do not see and focus on what God is giving you. What God is giving you is greater than any car you can buy. Trust me. You must have something greater than material things to get material things. You can't have something less than material things and then have these things. God is if all God gives you now is a car and a house and money he cheated you. He will give you something that will compel the gentiles to come to your light and even their kings to the brightness of your rising are we together now there is nothing in the bible that is a true blessing that is physical listen carefully there is nothing in the bible that is given physical like you give someone something physical you may call it a blessing but all blessings are spiritual all blessings the bible says that he has blessed us with all spiritual blessings that reside in heavenly places and in christ we reign in this kingdom by the access to the light that we have unfortunately Please pay attention, especially for those outside. Unfortunately, men are so result conscious that they understand spiritual things too late. The system of the kingdom is such that until the tree is established before fruits come out. So if all you are looking for is just result, you may, be, you may miss a major part of the dealings of God. God is working something in your life and there's still a rent issue waiting. And then the devil will use manipulate because you see, let me tell you this. The domain of the senses is where Satan dwells. He is the master of the sense realm. 
he knows that the natural man is governed by the impulses the sensory perceptions that come from his environment so he will try to manipulate what is there or not there and use it to probe and discredit the integrity of what god is doing in your life if it is true you are receiving favor where is it and you stand and say boy it's true oh, Kai, god you serve I just finished seven days dry fasting and it was by the mercy of God I met my roommate almost finishing his gari. Are we together now? And the devil cheats you because he's a master of the sense realm. But do you not know the Bible says while we look not at the things which are seen, the things which are seen, you don't look at them but you can look at the things that are unseen because the things that are seen are temporal say temporal poverty temporal low levels in the spirit temporal he said but the things that are unseen they are eternal so we must be spiritual and by spiritual it means that we use the word of god as our new plane our perception becomes a derivative of the integrity of God's word, not our experiences. Your experience at this level does not capture enough to prove that God is faithful. So if you depend on your experiences, you will see gaps in, supposed gaps in the faithfulness of God. You will see obvious things God did not do, supposedly. So you take your mind, your life is too small to just try to create a system of vetting God's integrity. You use the word of God and say, Lord, my life may not have A, B, and C yet, but I know from the integrity of your word that you do not fail. And not even my own experience is enough to discredit your integrity. You have cheated Satan when you get to that level. Because Satan will never be able to manipulate you until he uses something that is obvious in your life. Where is the money if you say God is faithful? Where is the anointing? You are a man of God and you claim God has raised you to be a prophet to the nations. In one year, nobody invited you for anything. Is it really true that the hand of God is at work in you? Where are the Gentiles that should come to your light? At first, you will claim you have faith. But the reality of the lack of demand on your grace will sit down and discourage you. And he said, am I called or what? If it's a demonic attack, let me know. And repent and just find somewhere. But I mean, am I called? And God says, just listen to me. But if you continue staying, my brothers and my sisters, one day it will do you like a dream. You will wake up one day into a dimension of the spirit that you will have to step back and join others to say, Lord, what is this? And then men will say, like they always say, he came out of nowhere. And God will say, keep quiet. Nobody comes out of nowhere. He says meditate on these things give yourself wholly to them if if you give yourself halfway hoping so that if it fails at least you can put your leg somewhere it, it doesn't work like that let me tell you you throw yourself in this thing and say if i perish i perish this this scientific christianity i know god is faithful but let me patch him with an uncle so one leg is here one leg so that whatever happens your ego is not strong and that very ego is why you may never see the power of god because you have not proven to god that you have thrown all to him and you just come and say god if you don't help me i don't have an option god says this is what i like now that you have stepped aside let me show you that i'm a great god are we blessed tonight i commend you to god and to the word of his grace that is able to build you you know most believers don't know why the church is mandated to meet frequently even pastors most men of god don't know why they hold weekly fellowships others think we hold weekly fellowships so that at least there will be resources to run the ministry um, for for the week or the month because every time people gather they drum the fact that you shouldn't come before god empty-handed so they think that the regular convergence of believers is just a system of generating revenue for the church it may not be entirely true the regular convergence of believers is a system designed in the intelligence of god 
is one of the ways that the church is built one of the ways that the church matures because every time we gather together among the many things that happen number one there is an opportunity for an encounter with the spirit of god that's entirely spiritual are we together now and then number two an opportunity to learn the ways of god to learn the ways of god life will not excuse you for what you do not know life treats those who disobey and those who don't know in the same category i'm passionate about what i do not know i'm passionate about the danger i may submit myself to not knowing what i should know and so my heart is always panting to find out lord thank you for what you have shown me but what else do i not know if you do not know look at me for instance if i'm standing at the edge of this stage and i do not even know that there is a depression here that can throw me down i'm just shifting innocently the depression will not think that just because i'm not aware it will not touch me i will fall and it can kill me is that true so when someone tells you hey hold on when you get here stand that knowledge has delivered you is that true so we come for a convergence like this because it is an opportunity for god to expose us to the ways of god and then it is an opportunity to experience the power of god in the midst of his people is 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 not going to be possible to present a god that you have not tasted of the possibilities that are contained in him it's one thing to know that the possibilities of god are encapsulated in this bible but it's another thing for your life to at least have a taste of it you don't need to experience everything but that god does something in your life that you can now say kai god now i know i know so the next time you are talking to someone and says which god you say no forget about the apostle look at my life i'm now a testimony an epistle that god is able to do this and that hallelujah there is a spirit that makes believers to not focus on the ministry of the word the spirit of distraction you can even come to church and you'll be surprised that just because you are sitting and looking you are learning no the bible says that the sower sows the word right there satan is in the midst of of, of god's people roaming around and looking for careless hearts and he comes by himself and takes the word so that you are ever learning oh this topic ah i know it i remember genesis chapter this verse this but there is no evidence that shows that this has become spirit and life in you. so please let's challenge ourselves and say lord it is true that i don't serve you just for results but lord i'm determined I'm determined to begin to see your hand in my life if you see God's hand in one two three areas and remaining four five six you are encouraged but where you get zero over six of God's hand is not enough testimony are we together it is the Word of God that builds it is the Word of God that gives men allocations in this kingdom like a domain and the word of god allocates you come darling and says you stand here come my dear stand here come this is your place of dominion you have believed in me enough the word of god gives you your allocation in life so this person starts somewhere and god says there is a seat i have given you in the prophetic and the word of god gives you that position you stay there and you know it's an office backed up by god himself no man will be able to stand against you this one was apportioned by the spirit as a testimony not of your desire for ministry listen as a testimony of your staying power with god for as a prince you have power with god you can roam around and say god has called me into business life drives you out you come again and say 
um, God called me into family and you roam around life and there is no space for you. He dug a well, they came and covered it. They say it's not your space. He dug another well, they covered it. When he dug the first one, they gave him space and he called it Rehoboth. He said, God has given me my own space. You need to have your own place in life. Dominion is territorial. Until you find your jurisdiction of dominion, you cannot begin to walk in it. You will hate people. You will be angry. You will quarrel people. You will hate others that God is blessing in their area of dominion. It is the word of God that allocates. While the word of God is being taught, mystery after mystery, principle after principle, the spirit of God is using the word to give men spiritual jurisdictions of power and relevance. And so this lady hears that God is distributing this and then the call of God upon her life locates her in the place of the call. And this one hears that God is lifting people in the area of business and God keeps her there. And by the time these people have been around God for a long time, you look at them and you see the grace of their office established in that dimension. This roaming around of believers without knowing the jurisdiction of your spiritual relevance is dangerous because satan can also mimic god and carry you somewhere that the equipping the wiring the spiritual configuration within you should not it does not allow you to be there and so they carry you and you die because you want to prophesy are we together now because the word of god did not give you the balance and the proper allocation your ego allocated you to a dimension you don't have grace for every prophecy you lied every prophetic command never came to pass and you find out you are frustrated and you stand and say lord what am i doing with my life I commend you to God and to the word of his grace which is able to build you egg, lava, pupa, adult and then when you are now mature to give you a space are you getting what I'm saying now? an allocation yes you're a medical doctor but I give you a space that you will carry the healing anointing to the nations you may be a doctor professionally but your destiny demands that you are working in this. How you know you are making progress in the spirit is that somewhere along the lines of your experience, you begin to see these spiritual allocations. You can know. God, where are you taking me to? Just follow. It first starts as a general prayer. It first starts as just studying the word of God to know him. Let me tell you, there is nobody that God puts ministry consciousness in him before he calls him. That's wrong training. The, you start on a neutral ground. Lord, I love you. I need your presence. I need your glory. Not I need a church. Not I need a title. Not I need a PA. Not Lord, I've suffered in this family. Won't I be rich? No, sir. God does not define the geography of men's assignments first. He allows them to begin to seek him on a neutral ground. And then on, on grounds of their faithfulness, when their hearts are locked to him, then the spiritual jurisdiction of their assignment, he starts to allocate it. And many times, depending on the jurisdiction, there are jurisdictions that will necessitate that you touch other dimensions before finally getting there. So God is calling you into an apostolic ministry, but you will start as an evangelist. For two years, you will be an evangelist. And then you will switch and be a teacher. And then you will be like a missionary. The final destination is here. By the time you build a camp there, I am evangelist Emeka. By the time that apostolic grace is coming, you will cause confusion. Because you are among evangelists, but they know that what you are doing is not evangelism. And you will start teaching based on your experience. And you will start saying the rest are wrong. Whereas it was your staying power in the training to allow you get to the final destination. Please, place value on the word of God. Place value on the, not just the reading of the word. You have been reading it. Place value on its ability to give you something in life. Look, let me tell you this. If I am your physical father and I have a little estate and you are waiting for me to die so that 
they can they can share the um, what they call it get the debt benefit and share the money listen to what i'm trying to say the physical land and the territory you have can be seized by the government as simple as that they just say we need it and we will think of what to do another government will say it was not me the past government has gone and never will come forever but when god gives you a spiritual inheritance no man no tribe they may hate you but my brothers and my sisters when a key is given to you the key is given in a way and a manner that god will cause nations to pass through that door it's impossible to ignore you these are the truths i have found there is rest when you find this all this fear up and down how will my future be will i be great will i eat will my children eat those questions were designed to be answered naturally when you follow the pace of god's training there are many questions we ask now they are questions because we are jumping classes if you stay with god there are some questions you will not need to ask believe me the kind of questions you ask will tell you what kind of student you are when you are a proper student the responsibility of the spirit of god no there there you won't even know when you enter certain dimensions that others are praying for because your heart is with him and you are saying lord guide me curriculum after curriculum no rushing no comparison i stay with you five years others have moved forward they have jobs and they have this and you are moving around like a thief across the earth and say lord what am i god say you you are my son at least know that one for now even if you don't know what i called you to do behold what manner of love what what is greater than that one lord help me who am i i'm moving around like cain and god says don't let the devil cheat you just walk with me and in one year god will look at you and establish you with a grace and people will look at you and say ah, ah, i used to know pastor femi unfortunately you used to know him that he has died died in training and resurrected with another life the son of man in power and glory he passed through a doorway in the spirit called galatians 2 20. now he has come out with a new light a new grace are we learning something already God bless you. Bless you guys. Thank you. We must have passion for the word of God. I will touch a bit on something that I thought I would have the allowance to preach this year. In fact, when the Lord put this in my heart, I said, oh Lord, but I've cried to you again and again to allow me to preach this. And... Um, I honestly thought we'll be able to have the series um, but maybe tonight I may just do a little introduction on it um, it's very powerful very powerful Kai. God thank you thank you There are things when you find in this kingdom please listen to me there are things when you find in this kingdom god hell and men will know you found something there are things when you find only god will know you found it there are things when you find only men will know but there are things when you find god men hell will know that by his grace you have been given something and this is what i'm guiding you to understand do you know what i'm doing to you i'm reconstructing your understanding about god and the correct approach to life now you may not see the value in what you are receiving now but my brothers and my sisters give god time and be patient with yourself and watch the wonder that you become So tonight, I will just do an introduction of it, true riches. Just an introduction. It's not part one. We have a series next 
we'll, 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 we'll transfer it to next year but and, and don't think I'm talking about money at all settle down and listen and let God bless you because when we hear riches the first thing we think about because of the way I don't know if it's the way our country is, is going all the way you know once people just hear riches a lot of people are very happy this is a very spiritual teaching in fact riches is really spiritual Luke chapter 16 and verse 11 Luke chapter 16 and verse 11 read with me believers one two read Ah, that's not you be delivered from let's read one more time one to read uh-huh hold on it's a question who will commit to you so this one is not an achievement people commit it to you listen who will commit to your trust the true riches unfaithful mammon the word unfaithful suggests instability is that true something that is not reliable and it says that if you are not faithful with the, in your righteous mammon who will commit to your trust when i saw this scripture it blessed and changed my life who will commit to your trust true riches there's something in this kingdom called true riches and the bible says that the basis for access to it among other things is faithfulness listen very carefully and then that this dimension of spiritual blessings that the bible calls true riches is a commitment meaning that god observes and sees your faithfulness listen carefully he can allow you to do whatever it is that you're doing but whilst you're doing it he's observing you and that you get to a point where you pass that spiritual test and like a report card god calls you and says i give you something called true riches and he says that if you are unfaithful with unrighteous mammon who will commit to you that means aside from god who else has that access he's not just trying to tell you the, he's saying who else who else can commit to you this mystery that we call true riches thank you ephesians chapter 3 we'll read from verse 2 to 8 listen very carefully and you understand something powerful tonight Paul is speaking now. If ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which is given me to you, word, verse 3, how that by revelation, listen, he made known unto me, what? The mystery. By revelation, he made known. I didn't search it out. He brought it and gave it to me. As I wrote a four in few words. We are reading to verse 8, verse 4. Whereby when ye read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. 5. Which in other ages was not made known to the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. 6. That the Gentiles should be fellow heirs, and of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. 7. Wherefore, I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given to me by the effectual working of his power. 8. <laughs> Listen, it says unto me, Paul now, Paul is looking at the excellency of what he has found and saying, Lord, do I deserve this? Listen, it says unto me who am less than the least of all the saints is this grace. So it's a grace. Is this grace given? What is the grace? That I should preach among the Gentiles. Help me. The unsearchable riches. Not just the gospel. 
that I should preach the unsearchable, unfathomable riches. Look at the description that is used there. He didn't say that I should preach the gospel, that I should preach. They, they are mysteries. The Bible says there is a grace that this grace can operate in a man and grant him uncommon understanding to these mysteries that the Bible calls the unsearchable riches of Christ. These are very deep spiritual things. Listen. And these are the spiritual blessings by which the dominion of the saints is established upon the earth. That the dominion of the saints is not just established because all things have, you know, you have dominion. No, no. Prophetically, the dominion of the church has been established. But in experience, we are yet to come into the fullness of that understanding. Paul was speaking to the church, the Hebrew church, and he told them, he says, he was quoting Psalm, Psalm 8, you know, that you have put all things under his feet and all of that. And he says, but we do not yet see all things. The unsearchable riches of Christ. What is it? If I ask you, define for me, because this is in the Bible. This is the Pauline epistle. What is the unsearchable riches of Christ? Money? Business? Naira and Kobo? No, sir. May God open your eyes. This is an introduction tonight, but may God open your eyes to see it. My brothers and my sisters, these are the commanders of dominion. These are the systems allocated for the dominion of the saints. The Bible calls it true riches. That man, there is a grace that God by observation, seeing your faithfulness, this one you can never find it. It's not just by fasting and praying. It's not just by reading a book. God comes to you as a reward for faithfulness and grants you a grace that opens you up to a mystery called the unsearchable riches of Christ. This is what the Bible calls true riches. What is it? That's why Paul, Paul was, remember Paul said, I thank my God, I pray in tongues more than ye all. So Paul would be lying if he told us he was spiritually lazy. That man was very diligent in the spirit. And when it came to this description, Paul was even broken. Seeing the level and the gravity of the spiritual investment made upon his life, he acknowledged that unto me, who am less than the least of the saints, was this grace given. That I should be the custodian to release this unsearchable mystery to the body. Until Paul came, no man had seen it. Not even the eye of those who walked with Jesus. They walked with Jesus. They saw many spiritual things, but their eyes could not see this dimension. And that's why Paul said, I didn't see him in the flesh. I was, I was, I was a murderer out somewhere when Jesus was, I was not even part of the 70 and God just picked a young man on his way to Damascus. A donkey falls down. He knocks me and calls me and says, I want to give you, I want to allocate space for you in this dispensation that you are mandated to be the custodian, the dispenser. That's why he started by saying, look, when my teachings are hard, don't criticize me. There is a grace. I received it. God came to me by revelation and opened up to me this thing and he calls the name, the caption of it is the unsearchable riches of I have cried and cried and told the Lord to take away useless knowledge from my life. That means profitless knowledge, both for me and for the saints. That God will grant me access to light and truths that are useful to help men and help my generation first to know him and then to be able to walk in the experience of his life. It's been my prayer it still is my prayer and so when the lord opened me up to this i was so blessed let me tell you sincerely and and god is my witness and i tell you this i'm a i'm a student i'm not ashamed when i learn things from people and i build 
you know i'm not i'm not somebody who is is is, is arrogant to say all this and that I ha i'm a product of many 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 spiritual minds but when it came to these dealings the way i look at you is the same way god was opening me up to the world see this this is the key the mystery that connects to this and many times when I listen to people, fathers of faith, and I hear them teach, I say, God, this is what you were telling me. I say, because I'm the one who told them to. Not everything in your life will come by studies. I'm not teaching you to be lazy. But we're teaching, we're teaching, this is, this is, this is a school of the spirit. Not everything in your life will come by studies and lecture. My brothers and my sisters, there are different ways God imparts knowledge to us. One of it is through the stillness of your spirit. Be still and know that I am God. And one of it is access, revelation, spiritual illumination. God just comes to you and grants you access there are things i know today i don't know how i got it the same way you receive a prophetic word i just know that this came to me what are these unsearchable riches right these are the spiritual blessings that provide an advantage for the believer to reign on the earth. These spiritual blessings, these unsearchable riches, what you call true riches, they are spiritual blessings that provide an advantage for the believer to reign on the earth and manifest the reality of God's life here and now. The spiritual blessings that provide an advantage. There has to be a system in our dealings with God where we stand at an edge, where we sustain an advantage. It is not, it is not something hidden that life is harsh. My brothers and my sisters, listen to me. It is no secret that ministry without a spiritual advantage is simply a human pursuit of frustration. Men are not that kind to allow you excel without the assistance of the spirit realm. Mm -mm. From tribal sentiments to the gates of hell and their manipulations, etc., etc. Everything looks like it's against you. You only rise and reign in life to the degree to which you sustain a spiritual advantage. Are we together now? yes um come come doctor if you ask us to push ourselves and he's standing here he's already in a vulnerable position and then you provide a system of support and i'm standing here and someone is holding me these things are my advantage is that true now even if he's stronger than me if he tries to push me on the strength of these factors you see that i will get a dimension of results that is unfair because that's not the true reflection of my capability i have trusted systems that have provided an advantage and the bible tells us that these unsearchable riches they were designed by god as a proof of his love and his determination to see that the saints reign so he put together these systems so that by them we can stand strong and shout at the gates of hell and know that there is a spiritual fortification it is ultimately god that gives us victory my brothers and my sisters but the victory is broken into systems so you can know that God has given you victory and not understand the systems he provided. And you find out that your life consistently continues to be a disadvantage. Are we together now? Bless you. Thank you. So true riches I define as spiritual blessings that provide an advantage for the believer to reign on the earth. And to manifest the reality of God's life here and now we're just doing an introduction
Romans chapter 5 and verse 17. The Bible says that they which have received the abundance of grace. Everybody say the abundance of grace. The abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness. It says they shall reign in life. They shall reign in life. They shall reign in life. This is what validates the fact that we are kings. Revelation chapter 5 and verse 9 to 10. Revelation chapter 5 and verse 9 to 10. And they sung a new song saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain and hast redeemed them should be. It's a mistake there. Because these are the four and twenty elders. Redemption was not for them. So they are speaking over the saints. So the word us there is a mistake in translation. Redeem them to God by thy blood. Out of every kindred. Listen now. Every tongue, every people, every nation. Verse 10. And has made us. Now them you understand. And has made us unto our God. What? Kings. And priests. And the Bible says, and we shall reign. Where? On earth. So God's dominion agenda is real. He wants us to reign. He wants us to manifest a dimension of the multifaceted possibilities that are resident in the Christ. Now I hope you understand, let's, let's refresh ourselves with redemption realities, that Jesus Christ came and said, I am the way, the truth and the life. Then he says that no man cometh to the Father except by me. Is that true? So Jesus is the door to the kingdom. He is the only, not even just many. He is the only valid access point into the life of the Spirit. You can manipulate through all the routes into a life of spiritism. But if you want to access the kingdom life, Jesus is the authorized channel, not even an angel. Are we together now? And then the Bible lets us know that the, the, the system that makes for salvation, Romans chapter 8, when you, 10, when you read from verse 8 to 10, you know, the Bible says that you confess with your heart the Lord Jesus, you believe, you will mouth the Lord Jesus, you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, then you are saved. The moment you get born again, watch this. What does it mean to be saved, as it were? To receive new life. Very simple. The Bible says that there is a translation. But much more than a translation, the Bible lets us know that this divine life, the life we call Zoe, known by men as eternal life, but it's more than eternal life. It is God's life, a quality, not the kind, the very life of God. Are we together now? The Bible says by the ministry of the Holy Spirit that that life is supplanted. We are refreshing ourselves now upon the human spirit so that he that becomes joined to christ now becomes one spirit is a mystery known in ancient times as the salt covenant where two people wanting to enter an inseparable relationship bring salt all of them bring samples of their salt and they mix it together the condition for separation is that everyone must pick his salt are you seeing that now yes Another example I've taught you is called the doctrine of interpenetration. This is the mystery of marriage. The mystery by which two people become one. Right? So, a separate entity called a man. Another separate entity called a woman. By covenant, they become one. One, not physically, but one in the spirit. Recognized by God himself. Are we together now? That's why the Bible says, let no man do asunder. It put asunder. It's a warning because there are implications in the realm of the spirit. Are you getting what I'm saying now? So man receives of that life, Zoe, the spirit of God. And then among the many things that, are, that happen to man is that your capacity to now begin to comprehend spiritual things is quickened still by the ministry of the Holy Spirit. And then the operation of the word, the logos, and the operation of the Spirit of God begin in your life. You begin to learn the ways of God and then the word of God begins to wash you. Huh? Like you wash a cloth. Begins to purify your conscience and then your mind is educated again. The light 
is driving out that darkness and gradually gradually by all those exercises conformity and transformation not impartation yet conformity and transformation these things will remain for a very long time in your life and then you begin to see the grace speaking are we together now because grace and peace is multiplied through knowledge so it's a laborious assignment because not everything in your mind is of the devil there are things that are correct so god will not reset your mind and then he will do that only with your permission so it's possible to be transformed one degree in 10 years that's how slow you wanted god to take you are we together now so you find out that after 10 years the level of results that should accrue to a life that was diligent with god is not showing in your life god is limited by your yieldedness limited by your alignment this is what now begins to separate believers into different cadres. and then of course now you bring the issue of the election of grace people who by his predetermined counsel he has called into certain offices and dimensions usually god will do an unusual work in them are we together now a work many times that is more than their personal yieldedness that's why they can't take credit for it it was an acceleration that came because of the assignment they are to provide so they enter dimensions of the prophetic way before they start understanding what prophecy is the only thing they have to do is correct their errors not pray for new visions they have been seeing it since it's just that they have been interpreting nonsense so what they are repenting of is not it's not it's not a hazy vision there are people who even they got born again and there and then they started seeing visions there and then others came from priesthood a wrong key forced the door to, you, you understand what i mean a wrong key of spiritism and tradition opened a wrong door i hope you know that if you meet a native doctor and he opens your eyes even when you get born again the eyes will not close again it's been opened hmm. the only thing is you will hand over the lordship of that sight to god are you getting what i'm saying now because there is a spirit that becomes the gateway of your access uh, believers are you learning something yes to you it looks like you are just seeing visions no there is a spirit that grants you access to that gateway and there is an exchange that happens that you are not aware for being granted access to see things in the spirit and you are routing by a wrong door you will not know because it's subtle after 10 years you find out that your soul has truly been sold to the devil are we together now so when you get born again it's true that your eyes were open with the charm you will stop seeing the demons that oppressed you but the realm of the spirit is already open to you it's true systems of advantage that believers can access and god can grant them grace maybe let me just touch on two or three of them at least we'll, we'll still do them next year the unsearchable riches these are the things that when I look at in my life sometimes I just get down on my knees and I say God thank you thank you you don't owe me anything you have been faithful I found them and they are very powerful can I give you the first one the first of these true riches this mystery is called the goodness of God the goodness of God what is this you will know now that it is that grace that is released on you if this grace is not present you cannot have conscience it is the goodness of God that is responsible to plant the need for repentance in men not mercy mercy has its place the goodness everything i'm telling you i'll show you from the bible you will now see why god told moses it is my goodness i will allow you to see my goodness the goodness of god allows for conviction of wrongs and repentance 
But the goodness of God also allows for continual repentance. The word repent is not for sinners. I've told you this. It's not a word that is just left for sinners. It's a kingdom expression. A system of consistent realignment to a greater dimension of God's glory. It's called repentance. Let's look at a very serious scripture. Romans chapter 2 verse 1 to 4. Just write it down and let's read. We're Bible students. Romans 2 one to four ready i will tell you where to join me in the reading therefore thou art inexcusable O man whosoever thou art that judgest listen now carefully he's talking about judgment for wherein thou judgest another thou condemnest thyself for thou that judges does the same things too but we are sure that the judgment of god is according to truth against them which commit such things three and thinkest thou this, O man, that judges them which do such things, and doest the same, that thou shalt escape the judgment of God? Now look at verse 4. Read with me, please. Or despised thou the what? Riches. Hold on, stop. Let's not rush. Despised thou the... Remember, we're talking of true riches. We're fishing them out now. That there is something called the riches of his goodness. What does it do? And forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leaded thee to repentance. If you ever repent, it is the goodness of God that came to you. It's not something you did by your strength to say, oh, I think, I... no, the, the fortitude to realize the need for alignment is proof that God has been good to you. This is the Bible. It says it is one of the two riches given to the saints, the riches of God's goodness. Hmm. Are we still together tonight? Did you know that the riches of God or the goodness of God is one of the true riches of the kingdom. Many people just ah oh God. When the Bible says surely goodness, we quote it every time. Surely goodness and mercy. I think we are singing a special number. This is a very deep mystery. If the goodness of God does not go with you, I will tell you. I will show you people from the Bible the state of a man who has not been granted access to these riches. You will see what happens when god looks at people jesus looks and says you are poor in spirit that they are bankrupt he knew what he was saying they had food in their houses but there were certain attributes of the the advantage of god given to the saints it's not there in their life let me show you first timothy chapter 4 and verse 2 this is a portrait of men who have not been granted access to the riches of God's goodness. Read with me. One, two, read. Speaking lies in hypocrisy. Uh -huh. Having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Do you know what this means? That means you have lost the ability to recognize. This is what happens to a man who can carry a knife and tear a pregnant woman, bring out a child, and kill the person and by the next day he's moving and smiling let me tell you what that person needs is not revival what that person needs is not even mercy what that person needs is the goodness one of the two riches sent like an errand once the goodness of god meets that person he breaks down immediately true riches the unsearchable riches of Christ. So God looks at men and sends his goodness to them. And all of a sudden you see men translating from level to level. And they do not know what spiritual mystery is responsible for it. Keep that scripture again please. Romans 2 and verse 4. The riches of his goodness. Not just his goodness. The riches. The wealth. You see that a man who had this was David. David knew the goodness of God. That's why he became a man after God's heart. Lucifer didn't have this. If Lucy, no, no demon has this. Lucifer was not given the privilege of accessing the goodness of God. 
So repentance is in it. It's not that he doesn't want to do it. Has he not been watching believers get born again in crusade grounds? Why didn't he say, God, I've watched this thing for a long time. Let's talk. You are my creator. No. It is the goodness of God that allows men to ever see the need for repentance. Hmm. Evangelists pray for this if you are going for crusades. Don't just pray for signs. Oh God, let them know I was called. <clears throat> pray intelligently. Lord, let there be a supply of the riches of your goodness and you will watch the wonder. This is what happens in redemption camp. When Papa Ia Deboe preaches a simple message and says, I will count one to five. One. And you see people run. They don't even know what is bringing them out. This is what the generals had. Charles G. Finney. Are we together now? They had this in, in very abundant measures. They understood this wealth of the kingdom called the goodness of God. When we say the goodness of God, we just mean his ability to be benevolent. It's more than that. The primary assignment of the goodness of God is to create awareness of the need to realign so that we become better reflectors of his glory. The Bible calls it his goodness. Second Peter chapter 3 and verse 9. Is somebody learning something tonight? It says, who shall commit to you if God opens your eyes and you see it and engage it, then your life will change. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise as some men count slackness. But is long suffering to us what? Not willing that any man perish, but that all should come to repentance. This is God's willingness. So he sees our family members and he already knows that the way they are going, their lives can never reflect God and then his goodness. Some of you, it was the goodness of God that brought you here to Koinonia, not invitation. It was the goodness of God that gave you access to the teachings because God designed that you come to repentance first of salvation and then consistently realigning your life and then you see the beauty and the glory of god come out of your life say the unsearchable riches of christ hmm. let's try another So the goodness of God is an advantage in my life. An advantage. An advantage. What is the advantage? Causing me to consistently realign. So that I get to a point where my life becomes like the brightness of the sun. And people say, ah, ah what happened? And you say, God has been good to me. Now, the carnal man would think what you are saying is, God gave me favor. You understand what I'm saying? Or God made a helper. Or like our dear sister shared... God made somebody to give me miracle Allah. That's true. But what really happened was that he caused you to repent, to align, so that his glory can better find expression in your life. The riches of his goodness. The next time you see stubborn and rebellious people in your house, the key is not counseling. The key is intercession for a solid encounter with the goodness of God. I, I got to hear a very touching testimony of some of these are young people who are very stubborn and the family collected a loan trusting God to help them to start a life and the, the young boy and his friend, true story, they went to carry the car of the the car of the the friend's father you know all these boys that carry cars just to explore their their whatever it is and this one would drive and pack and give this one to drive and pack they were changing and then when it was the turn you see how the devil you see when the goodness of him it was now the turn of the young boy who came from a poor family whose parents now collected loan thinking it to help them start life and the young boy, it was his turn. He was driving a car of his friend's father. And there came a big truck. It was a miracle that the boy survived. And the family said, I'm not hearing anything. Just get my car and bring for me. 
that was how they had to look for uh, these are people like counsel they had to add an extra look for money because it got to the police station and all of that you see that kind of thing and you will see the boy he will pass as if he gave his parents a word for taking first the goodness of god is not there that sense of remorse he has put the family in in trouble that it would take the prophetic to bring them out not business this one you can't come out just by business acumen it's going to take god to come and lift you out and yet you see the boys moving around and i was just looking at him and he was looking around no remorse look at armed robbers that kill people in the night and by the next morning they pass the same house they rob and you see them smiling during crisis the people that kill people do they die suddenly they are alive they pass a house that they know i'm the reason for the obituary in this house and then they pass and laugh they have not encountered the goodness of god let me tell you it's not good to see somebody who has not partaken of the grace of the goodness of god they are the people we call heartless conscienceless like some of the corrupt people that steal the money of nigerians this is what they need are we together now number two Proverbs chapter 5, chapter 4, from 5 to 9. The second of the unsearchable riches is wisdom. Don't assume you know what I'm teaching. Just listen. Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 5. 1, 2, read. Question, where? Get pure water. Where? Um, shop. Are we together? Get pounded yam and soup. Where? Restaurant. Get injection for malaria. Where? Hospital. Get wisdom. Where? It's not that I don't want to get it. Where is it? Where do they find it? It says, get wisdom. Then get understanding. They go together. All through scripture. You see this. Now, um, next year I'm going to be teaching you spiritual operations. And one of it will be how spirits work. It's, they are all dimensions of the Holy Spirit. But you will notice that there are classifications. There is an operation of the Holy Spirit that never works as a person. Do you understand? It, it must be in twin, working that way. It was the mystery that Jesus used in sending the disciples. He sent them two by two. Never sent them one. Everywhere you see wisdom, from Genesis to Revelation, you will see understanding going with them. And then sometimes they can form a tag team, knowledge, wisdom, understanding. Three of them. A threefold cord. That whoever stands in the middle, it's only God that can take him out. When you stand in the middle of knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, a fortification has been built that nothing designed by man can break that defense. Stronger than the wall of Jericho. It says, get wisdom, get understanding. Forget it not. We're reading to verse 9. Listen carefully. Neither decline from the words of my mouth. Uh -huh. Forsake her not. The Bible personifies wisdom. And she shall preserve thee, love her, and she shall keep thee. Seven. Wisdom is the principal thing. It says, therefore, get wisdom. And with all thy getting, see it now again, get understanding. Now see the benefits. Exalt her, and she shall promote thee. She shall bring thee to honor. You know what honor is causing men to discern 
acknowledge and celebrate your relevance. The Bible says wisdom is in the office of wisdom to bring honor to men. When thou dost embrace her, last verse, it says she shall give to thy head an ornament of grace. You said you are a king, but where is your crown? Wisdom is the holder of the crown. It says she shall give a crown of glory. It is through wisdom we find glory. A king without a crown is not a king. In ancient times when they defeated cities, they not only removed the crown of the king, they removed his whole head and walked with it back to their city. A, a symbol. The moment the king was captured and his head taken, nobody fights again. The battle was over. And now the Bible says that the wisdom shall give you a crown of glory. I can say I am a king, but where is my crown? That there is a spiritual blessing that holds the crown of those who will reign in this life. And the Bible says it is called wisdom. Proverbs chapter 8 is going to be a long reading. Be patient with me. Be patient with me. I want us to pray tonight. These are the systems that will make your life worth living will make your life meaningful by every standard proverbs chapter 8 doth not wisdom cry look at how merciful god is to the extent that wisdom now goes around looking the bible says wisdom is crying crying because of the foolishness of men and what their lives are becoming as a result of lack of accessing her it says an understanding are you seeing them together Wisdom is crying, understanding is adding her voice. Next verse. Reading to the end. Two. She standed in the top of high places by the way, in the places of the paths. Three. Let's hurry up. She cried at the gates, the place of exchange, where men enter and go out. Wisdom says, don't pass without me. Don't return without me. At the entry of the city, at the coming it at the doors for unto you O men i call wisdom is speaking and my voice is to the sons of man O ye simple simple there does not mean humble simple means unwise meaning there is there is no fortitude for comprehension it says understand wisdom and ye fools be of an understanding heart hear for i will speak excellent things and the opening of my lips shall be right thing seven for my mouth shall speak truth and wickedness is an abomination to my lips eight all the words of my mouth are in righteousness and there is nothing forward and perverse in them they are all plain to him that understandeth and right to them that find knowledge receive my instruction and not silver hold on if i give you wisdom and i give you silver wisdom says please don't be foolish to choose silver leave silver fast and come to me and knowledge rather than choice gold for wisdom is better than rubies two things the bible says are better than rubies one wisdom to a virtuous woman and all the things that may be desired are not to be compared to it. Uh huh. I, wisdom, dwell with prudence and find out the knowledge of witty inventions. I hope we have the grace to continue. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride and arrogancy, and the evil way and the forward mouth do I hate. Counsel is mine and sound wisdom. I am understanding, I have strength. Please read by the spirit. This is what I want you to do. Now wisdom is giving you a manifesto. Like a gentleman trying to ask a lady out. And he's trying to convince her and give her reasons to say yes to him. And he's saying by me, kings reign. If you see any king reigning on earth, this is what enthroned him. Wisdom. You see any king reigning in business, in ministry. It's not just God wisdom by me kings reign and princes decree justice 16 by me princes rule and nobles even all the judges of the earth 
I love them that love me. And those who seek me early will find me. That means it's not cheap to find wisdom. He gives you a time to seek. Riches and honor. You see why he said you should not choose silver? Because riches and honor are with me. Yea, durable riches and righteousness. My fruit is better than gold. Yea, than fine gold. And my revenue than choice silver. I lead in the way of righteousness in the midst of the paths of judgment. Will soon be there. That I may cause those that love me to inherit. Talk to me. I cause those who love me to inherit. Substance there is not money. Substance there is results. Tangibility. I will fill their treasures. Go ahead. The Lord possessed me. So this is how creation happened. Through wisdom a house is built. Wisdom is saying the Lord possessed me in the beginning of his way. Before his works of old. Next verse. I was set up from everlasting from the beginning or ever the earth was. When there was no depths, I was brought forth. When there were no fountains abounding with water. Before the mountains were settled, before the hills was I brought forth. While as yet he had not made the earth, nor the fields, nor the highest part of the dust of the world. When he prepared the heavens, I was there. When he set a compass upon the face of the depth. When he established the clouds above. When he strengthened the fountains of the deep. When he gave the sea his decree that the waters should not pass his commandment. When he appointed the foundations of the earth. Three more verses or two. Then I was by him. Ah. As one brought up with him. And I was daily his delight. Rejoicing always before him. Rejoicing in the habitable parts of the earth. And my delight were with the sons of men. Last verse. Now therefore unto me, O ye children... Hearken to me, O ye children, for blessed are they that keep my ways. Wisdom. One of the unsearchable riches that people can possess wisdom and he's saying even God used me for his results. That means you are not going to be able to produce any kind and any dimension of result without wisdom. What is wisdom? The ability to correctly engage the mysteries of the kingdom. Not the knowledge of it. Not the comprehension of it. The ability to correctly engage the mysteries of the kingdom is called wisdom. What is wisdom? The ability to use the word to produce supernatural results. That's wisdom. My brothers and my sisters, I can show you scriptures upon scripture. We are doing an introduction today. Supernatural wisdom that happened to men. They rose on account of that wisdom. Let's look at one scripture. 1 Kings chapter 3. Solomon. God's portrait of wisdom. You see that every once and again, these men obtain one or more of these attributes. And that's what they used to do business in the earth realm. And they, they dumbfounded the wisdom of men. First Kings chapter 3 and verse 9. We're reading to verse 13 from verse 9. Solomon is praying now. God is asking him, what should I do? And he says, give therefore thy servant an understanding heart. To judge thy people that I may discern between good and bad. For who is able to judge this thy so great a people? Verse 10. And the speech pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this thing. To 13. And God said to him, because thou hast asked this thing, and hast not asked for thyself, what? 
long life neither hast thou asked here it is again unfaithful mammon riches for thyself nor hast thou asked the life of thy enemies but thou hast asked for thyself understanding to discern judgment 12 behold i have done according to thy words let's see what god gave him i have given 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 i have given thee a wise and an understanding heart so that there was none like thee before thee neither after thee shall rise on any unto thee i have also given thee that which thou hast not asked both riches and honor so that there shall not be any among the kings you see that every time kings were there wisdom understanding go to chapter 4 from verse 29 go to chapter 4 and verse 29 chapter 4 first kings and verse 29 read with me please one two read and god gave go ahead solomon wisdom uh -huh, and understanding exceeding much and largeness of heart even as the sun that is on the seashore the manifesto the attributes of all this spiritual blessing next verse and solomon's wisdom excelled the wisdom of all the children of the east country and all the wisdom of egypt uh-huh for he was wiser than all men than ethan the ezrahite than heman than Kalkol, than dada all these guys are champions of wisdom they were noted for walking in strange dimensions of wisdom and his fame was in all nations round about 32 for he spake three thousand proverbs and his songs were a thousand and five worship team you see how songs come an encounter with the spirit of wisdom believe me one song that will cause the nations to bless you have you not seen that music artists write songs out of 50 they are like two three you know this is not human you know it by the way it lasts anything that is human has the characteristic of fading the moment time has no power over it it came from the realm of the spirit there are songs that were written when we were born and we are still singing it there were songs that were written last month we are tired of it it tells you the dimension it's not that there, there's something wrong with the song the dimension from which the song came if it is that which is of the earth is earthy that which is of heaven is heavenly 33 and he spake of trees from the cedar tree that is in lebanon even unto the high soap that springeth out of the wall he spake a lot he spake also of beasts and of fowls and of creeping things and fish i think there's one more verse and there came of all people to hear the wisdom of solomon from all kings of the earth does this look like gentiles shall come to thy light and they are kings to the brightness of your rising meaning there is what a man can possess my brothers and my sisters you may be in a shrine or you may be in a in a room that is made of mud blocks but kings will come when you possess what kings cannot buy they will come to you the last thing i'm going to do is to show you where wisdom stays because wisdom has a location job chapter 28 from verse 12 true riches when god wants to help a man he exposes you to the unsearchable riches of christ when you possess them you will look weak and frail my brothers and my sisters but when you begin to engage these systems of the kingdom your life becomes a wonder you see do you know why i'm taking our time to teach you these things <clears throat> so that you are not afraid of your results when you don't know the basis of the results that god gives you even that result will make you afraid because you are not sure of the system of defense around it are we together now but where shall wisdom be found remember i asked us a question he said get wisdom and i said where so job now the man of wisdom 
wisest, richest. Job is having a conversation. Where shall wisdom be found? And where is the place of understanding? Have you seen that they always go together? Next verse. Man knoweth not the price thereof, neither is it found in the land of the living. Ah, where is the land of the living? That means it's not found here. It's not a commodity that is affordable in any market. Let no man deceive you that he knows where wisdom is found in this earth. Mm -mm. It cannot be found. The earth does not have the capacity to produce this. It can produce Sophia, human wisdom, that is a derivative of trial and error and science, but not the wisdom that comes from above. The depth said, it is not in me. The sea said, it is not with me. That means all these things, go back, all these things are storage devices on earth. They hide things. The depth, there are things that the depth keeps. And those who know it can say, bring it out. That's why the prophet can stand and look at the ground and say, O oh, earth. He said, let the people praise thee. This earth is not barren. Let the people praise thee. This earth will start yielding. Meaning that fruitfulness was hidden in the earth. No wonder seed time and harvest was tied in the similitude of the principle of the earth the earth hides fruitfulness water hides abundance you read your bible everything the birds of the air and everything came out of water and so they said the depth said it is not with me the sea said it is not with me next verse it cannot be gotten for gold neither shall silver be weighed for the price thereof uh-huh it cannot be valued with the gold of offer nor with the precious onyx nor the sapphire next verse the gold and the crystal cannot equal it and the exchange of it shall not be for jewels of fine gold no mention shall be made of coral or of pearls for the price of wisdom is above rubies the topaz of ethiopia shall not equal it neither shall it be valued with pure gold 20 whence then cometh wisdom and where is the place of understanding he listed all the choice places in the earth where we can find treasurable things and he says that wisdom is not there seeing that it is hid from the eyes of all the living and kept close from the fowls of the air destruction and death say we have heard of his fame hmm. look at this destruction and death also give testimonies that they say we have even us we are still surprised as we destroy people and kill people we have noticed that whoever possesses this mystery escapes us freely he said we have heard of the fame thereof with our ears that means destruction is a spirit not an event it's a spirit it can come upon a family and leave out its characteristics good understanding god understanded the way thereof that's a secret only god understands the way and he knoweth the place thereof hmm. no just just stop at 23 god understanded the way that means if you ever see any man with that dimension of wisdom who gave him that's why I told you it is it is a grace. This is not something you walk. Education cannot give it. No. When men possess this dimension of wisdom, God gave it to men. It's one of the unsearchable riches of Christ. Solomon possessed it. And he did wonders. Ordinary men have been granted access to this mystery. And you can see a very young, frail person but carrying something ancient that was with God at creation and wisdom is justified by her children the results show you that this is not human my prayer is that somebody will will catch a dimension of this grace the wisdom of God that you will arise with it my brothers and my sisters and you will see Sheba and her bounties come to you that the things that you seek will come to you of their own accord believe me satan has deceived us to chase after things god never designed that we chase after things these are the commanders 
of dominion when you possess them it is impossible there is a testimony even from the realm of the spirit you don't have to plan to be great you just possess this and watch what they do to you the bible says she shall bring thee in other words i can find wisdom from a small room and wisdom says follow me like peter following an angel i step into the place of great men and i say what am i doing here and wisdom says this is where i live whoever possesses me will live with me and you will eat the bread of kings because wisdom brought you there but how many people desire the wisdom of god so many people will tell you this is an interruption there are many men of god that will not focus listen many young nigerians will not focus to listen to the wisdom of god just go all these pastors you are just lucky you are anointed you are anointed that's all let me hustle my life no sir no sir except the lord builds a house they labor in vain that build it except the lord watches over a city the bible declares that the watchmen watch it but in vain he said it is vain to wake up in the morning and to sleep late in the night only to eat the bread of sorrow but he giveth his beloved sleep when god gives you wisdom your eyes will see things and it will surprise you what god will make out of your life no man's anger and change what the wisdom of God does in your life. Let me tell you this. Learn this early in life. Whether people believe in you or not, it has no effect whatsoever on the forces of the Spirit working in your life. If you ever look at a man holding this unsearchable riches of Christ, your anger is just beginning. You will be angry till you die. It will not do anything because death is the last enemy to be destroyed so if death testifies that i've hands up then you two hands up quickly that is one of the forces that was upon a pale horse in revelation one of the four horse riders and it gives up and says no this one is above my power and above my dimension wisdom knowledge Maybe let me give us one last one. The unsearchable riches of Christ. True riches. Are you ready? <laughs> the hearing ear listen access to the voice of God is one of the mysterious riches of the kingdom the Bible says he that hath an ear let him hear what the spirit say yet the spirit saith the bible says the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times are we together now some shall depart from the faith he says giving heed to seducing spirits and the doctrines of demons in the the spirit speaketh expressly that means one of the greatest you are at a point of advantage the hearing ear has nothing to do with the prophetic office it is a grace that god washes your ear with high eyes so that you have the hearing ear is it not in your bible that thou shall hear a voice from behind saying this is the way why because there is a way that seemeth right if all ways were fair and right there would be no need for direction the hearing ear is a desperate prayer that everyone must cry unto god and say lord as i'm starting ministry give me the ear that hears let me tell you this listen i have studied the church in nigeria for many years i have studied the church in africa I have studied men and women of God and respectfully so I am amazed 
at the way people move this way when the Holy Ghost moved that way and their ministries ended overnight not sin not disobedience but that the spirit of god is going because the anointing goes where the spirit is going wherever the voice of god is that's where his power is so if god's voice and power is going left and you are going right even if it's sincerely so that's the end of it my brothers and my sisters let me tell you your spiritual investment of 20 years can crash in one day if you are not given the gift of a hearing ear you will appreciate this in years to come the higher you rise in ministry the more desperate you must cry moses said don't send us from here moses was not a fool with a rod in his hand thy rod and thy staff he said no way if you will not i need to know you are there just because god said move left yesterday does not mean he will say move left today you must hear him part time and there is a grace i have studied this subject of hearing god properly i can tell you hearing god even prophets have problem with hearing god let me tell you something about hearing god the gift of prophecy the hearing that comes to prophesy is not the same hearing that comes to give you direction you can walk in accuracy i can look at your name call your number call everything and you will be surprised how stranded you will be to hear the voice of god most people don't know because many people are, are prophesying nonsense and lies the hearing ear i i have a lot of friends and 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 by god's grace i've met very powerful and accurate prophets and you will be amazed at how stranded they are waiting for god to speak on matters in their lives and yet the accuracy that comes from them makes you believe that oh they are just lying down no where was the hearing of the son of the prophet who died and his wife was about to be taken the children were about to be taken the man was a prophet read your bible and see how many prophets were stranded be careful let me tell you this one day i will teach you how human beings spiritually are like machines i will teach you how god works with men so that just because a man is prophesying and dispensing mysteries let me tell you sincerely okay let, let's put it this way let's use midwives right have you noticed that you can see a midwife who has been giving birth helping people give birth for years and then when she is now pregnant you can be so surprised at the difficulty that she goes through and you are wondering madam with this experience right after her giving birth that almost took her life she will display that mastery again in the hospital prophets cry it's amazing how confused prophets can be i will stand upon my watch and set myself upon the tower listen and i will hear what he will say unto me read your bible and see people who missed very vital seasons in their lives although their gifts and their graces were still there when i learned this i learned this mystery from dr dk olukoya i was listening to him some years ago and he said something he said that one of the greatest prayer you can pray is for a hearing ear and i said what is the meaning of that and you see if god helps you and you walk in a dimension of these graces you must be careful because most times we see the flamboyancy on the gift and you can join men even to deceive yourself that just because that gift that prophetic operation is at work it necessarily means you yourself are accurate it's not true have you not seen people dying of infirmity and healing others what is the mystery behind it if, if you understand what i'm this thing is a very deep teaching that's why the bible says, work out your own salvation 
with fear and trembling. One of the unsearchable riches of Christ is a grace that can be given to men that you hear the sounds of the Spirit. You stand and watch and say, I've heard him. God is saying, go left. And everybody is saying, go right. Use common sense. You know you heard God. When you move left, after five years, people look at you. I have seen a bit of what hearing God can do. This ministry today, my brothers and my sisters, is proof that when men get these unsearchable riches, you won't go down. I'm not one person who comes all the time and say, God said, God said. I'm very careful. Now we have, especially we young people, we have abused God said. Anybody just comes and says, God said. Just because you felt like God said. No. Or just because you were under the anointing and your mouth was talking. There are tongues of men. There are tongues of angels. There is the voice of God. Are you getting what I'm saying now? This is very powerful. You must learn it. There are times when I hear God speak, everyone around me knows God has said, the voice of God comes with the spirit of faith. If it is God that you hear, the voice of God will always come with the spirit of faith. And the spirit entered me when he spake unto me. It's impossible to hear God and remain and sit down there. No. Here and there you can think you had God and he said go to Kano. You can say I know I had Kano but tomorrow you just turn. But you know God is very faithful. He will allow you. He knows we are students in the school of the spirit. Just keep playing around. But the day his majestic voice lands on your life there is no power that can stop you. Let me tell you God is not always speaking. God speaks but he's not always speaking. A lot of people keep saying God is always speaking. No sir. Are you always talking? At least you were created in his image. No. In the fifth day of the sixth month, the word of the Lord came. The word of the Lord came. The word of the Lord came. I've had occasions where God has spoken to me. And you have seen it. Even some of the messages. There are messages here that God gave me the titles. And I was, I've been surprised at how they seem to have carried an unusual grace because God said it. I stand here many times and I tell you this is what God is saying. And then you begin to see the strange things that he is doing. Let's be careful with this God said. Let's not reduce God to become a man. Now it doesn't mean that you can hear things. There is the knowing of the spirit. There is the witness of the spirit. They all look like voices. You have to be very deep in the spirit to separate between impulses and speakings. They are very different. Just because you had a spiritual communication does not mean God spoke. Remember that in the realm of the spirit, the voice is not the only way to speak. Light is a way of communicating. Love is a language. It can speak. So I can hear. That's the reason why regardless of how sure you think you are, stay for verification. When God spoke about Koinonia to start three days, we had set up the departments. God has granted us grace. I remember, if you remember that time, I was telling you God told me this and that and that. People will come from nations and people, this is what God said. I remember saying it that time. As at the time I said it, I said I saw CGC. This is not what I saw. I saw it broken, expanded. What is this that I'm seeing? I saw people standing, parking, filling the roads. And you know, like, as usual, every time you said God said, you need grace yourself to believe it. Because there are times that you just sit down and say, okay, now I'm calm. It's like you, you smoked, uh, 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 what they call this thing. And so you went high and... To you, you can even say, look at the nonsense that I said. And you listen to your own message and say, hey, it's not exactly God. And God said, what are you saying? I'm the one speaking. We were preparing to start packaging our messages. I was thanking God and trusting 
and blessing him for the anointing he had given me and just saying, oh God, thank you because you are going to use our media ministry as a very major stream of income to bless the ministry and lift us. And here comes the voice of God. No. In this season, you are not going to sell your messages. Facebook, that time, it was, I mean, it was even the first head of media's Facebook page. And he said, just carry your messages and put them on MP3, put them on Facebook. Don't put the videos, just the audios. And I will give it wings and it will go to the nations of the earth. That's it. My brothers and my sisters, when God says, sit back and watch the power that created the universe push things in your life. There are things God has said. Listen to me. There are things God has said. When God talks, notice that God doesn't care what you are seeing. He tells you what you will do and he will do it. So I stand upon my watch. I'm not in a hurry to move. God, what are you saying in this season? That's the reason why we have workers' retreats. That's why we have our own retreats. A few weeks now, I'm going to start my end of year retreat. I'm telling you, you don't know how excited I am at that time. Because many of you have gone, no disturbances. I just shut my phone. And sometimes you need to get out of the busyness of life to hear God. Because there is, as it were, many voices, many sounds. And none of them is without significance. The voice of house rent can interrupt what God is saying. This spiritual haziness has a science. The encumbrances of life can push you. Your child's school fees, your life. And God is saying, fast for three days. I say, is it God? Is it a demon? Is it? Yes, there are times that you check against the word of God. But let me tell you, there are times only God will help you. Because even you, you don't know whether this is God again. Most people are not spiritual enough to get to this realm. That's why they don't understand. Years ago, I've shared with you the story. I had limited transport fare from Kaduna back to Zaria. And I took initiative and I went and ate yam and beans also with the money. I mean, why sit here till we die? Remember the four lepers. At least I should do one. I already know that it's only God that will know how to take me back home. And I believed with all my heart that I was acting by faith. And I did. And I stood in front of the junction near Waek office in Kaduna. And a car just stopped and the Holy Spirit told me, enter. Public transport, oh. I told you the voice of God comes with the spirit of faith. It's until the act has been done. When you turn back on hindsight, you say it has to be God who led me like this. When you are passing through it, you don't see the gravity of the faith you are exerting. It's when you look back and say, eh. I entered that car. I was just in rest. Rest. You are supposed to be afraid. You know how some of these our brothers are around and all of that. Until we passed Jaji, I knew there was no hope. You know, if it's 10 naira, you don't have, or 20 naira, you can beg. But I mean, when, when you don't even have up to 20 or 30 percent of what is the transport fare, and then they now said, Everybody bring your money, and people were bringing them. But my God is my witness, my heart was at peace this is what happens when it's god that is speaking you leave him to be responsible for the word i just obeyed and that was how someone brought out paid my transport fare i dropped at flyover here entered the bus happy because i felt at least whatever it is this one i'll pay and someone knew me in the car and paid i stopped in front of northgate with the same money i was with there it was a message God was saying, look, I am God by myself. I can do it anyhow. There are times I can send a helper to give you money. There are times I say the helper is in the car. Enter and meet him there. It doesn't matter where the helper is. Believe God enough to go. There are times he parts the waters. There are times he says, walk on it. Let it just be that he sees him. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? 
you will need this for ministry when god sent us to go for our crusade we got up and moved like madmen what you see today my brothers and my sisters is a product of the voice of god you need the grace to hear god not grace for prophecy lord let me hear you you, you, you look you can pray and say god such my frail person what is the most accurate spiritual mechanism of communicating your voice to me help me in that area there are some of you that your hearing you have not trained your hearing if you if god speaks through your ears you will not hear and so you are going to say lord give me a kind of dream that i will wake up and find myself standing i will know that this one was not a dream let me tell you if your heart is right god will give you there are dreams that no devil can tell you in your mind mind how many of you have had what we call prophetic dreams you know this one is not my mind this is the voice of god unsearchable riches the hearing ear the seeing eye one time the storm was boisterous I think it was Peter or Paul. And it was very obvious they were going to capsize. And all of a sudden, the hearing ear and the seeing eye, an angel appears to him and speaks to him and says, Don't worry, there shall be no loss. And he calmed the people down and said, Hey, relax. An angel has appeared to me and he has said to me that there shall be no loss and the bible says that the storm calmed down and they went safely and arrived an island called melita when you hear god you can sit in the midst of fire and be singing and people are saying excuse me sir this is fire you say no i'm sitting on the voice of god roasting someone by your left roasting another person by your right and acting as if the fire is not seeing you sooner or later you will need this message sooner or later you will carry destinies come darling you will carry destinies that are behind you and you will need to hear god on behalf of them one day you will have children one day you will have grandchildren and that day this spiritual blessing will be tested one day you will be a man of god with a crowd of people now all of you are waiting for the prophetic word next year whether i tell lies or not you will believe it's left for me and god and if i lie you will punish me are you seeing how risky it is many of you say we are praying for you but you know you are not even serious about what you are saying because you are saying apostle <laughs> the god that called you how you have been hearing him before let him help you just make sure you hear well for us you hear wrongly as a man of god for members and see the way their lives they will obey you against god just because you are fasting for a long time does not mean that your ears will hear it's a grace like earphone god will just put that spiritual earphone and start dictating this is how 2019 will be do this do that do this do that and he said god but like like Eliab, this is good and god says that's exactly the strategy satan wants to use next year use this route and you come out and he said people we are ready to go and they look at you and say ah just like that and god says don't mind them that's always how that's how the nation of israel was that's why moses was angry because he would suffer and hear god and come and talk to them and they would doubt husband please learn to hear god for your wife and your children otherwise one day god will be saying move left and you come with your degree and masters and phd nothing wrong you move left until life changes you in one position change your wife change the destiny of your children many of us sitting down here if our parents had god you shouldn't be at this level is that true there are a number of us we are going to pray many of us were victims of the lack of hearing many of our parents were called into ministry they ran away not hearing and the blessing that would have come to us if they obeyed god it would have been easy you would have been born again since four years 
but their disobedience now you got born again at 31 look how hard it is for you to learn the things of the kingdom the hearing ear is a grace man of god please whatever you will do with god i don't care what is not going on in your life if you can hear god hear god on who to marry hello hear god on who to marry you if god planned four children and you give birth to seven you will take care of four he supplies he supplies follow his voice i know you think i'm laughing this is how our lack of spirituality has cheated people in the world before kings went for war they would inquire of the lord is it in your bible shall we go and god will say go and give them the strategy we have lost this in our generation so we just step out and and life just beats us into nonsense what of relocating a place where you want to be domiciled in where your family will be raised in you don't hear god i've told you that when the devil wants to destroy some people he will give them visa visa to germany visa to europe just because the interview was easy doesn't mean it's god there are times that satan can give favor to kill you there used to be a guy who used to drive me years ago like maybe four five years ago he was desperate to go to germany i said what is it for i got to find out that he did one funny arranging thing where you do some kind of marriage with somebody there on contract then you come prepare papers and then fight divorce and then from there you have your papers and i don't know where that guy is now but he's a classic representation of grace to grass there are pastors that started well they kept navigating ministry well mighty men and women with anointing and then something happened in their life they didn't hear correctly or they didn't hear or they went based on the pride that results can bring no matter who you are if you trivialize the voice of god your head must touch the ground i'm telling you this it doesn't matter what level you get to in life and ministry please hear god as if you are just starting don't say because God has given me this. My name is Joshua Selman. God has given me results in ministry. If you hear me talk to you like this, I know what I'm saying. Lord, should I pursue? Lord, is this your will for me? Is this your will for me? Oh, there's one conference. that I have many great men and women of God. Some of my friends around within this nation. Around, and sometimes they have innocently felt, Apostle, let's put forth a program. Let's put forth this and that and that. People have come to tell me, Apostle, what are you waiting for? It's in the blueprint of the ministry to start Sunday services. What are you waiting for? I remember one prophet of God, very powerful prophet of God, met me and said, what are you waiting for? Start church. And I just looked and said, God bless you. But this year, I can't claim I hear everything. But my goodness, there are things this ear can hear. We are going to pray. And when it's time to pray, you are going to cry. If it means you laying hands on your ears to say, Lord, I am reaping the fruit of my not hearing you. It's very clear that my life is the way it is now. Because I'm not hearing you. Are we together? You need to hear God when you begin to hear multiple voices come down none of them is god let me give you a big secret i don't care what you are trying to hear the moment you are hearing multiple voices shut down none of them is god the majesty and the jealousy of god will not allow you to hear many things his voice is mighty upon the waters when you start hearing many voices rose magdalene mary Janet, shut down, my friend. You are not hearing God. Just shut down. Lord, what is the devil trying to do? You are going to Abuja today. Next tomorrow, you are praying and it's like you saw the map of Kano. And then it's like you now saw London. <clears throat> shut down. Lord, what are you saying? Please hear what I'm, I'm teaching you this based on the word and based on experience. Most people who get into trouble ignore the voice of God consciously somewhere along the journey this is true for marriage 
This is true for jobs. This is true for geographic locations. There are men of God that just stand up and go somewhere and just say, well, after all, I'm, I'm a believer in Christ. I love the Lord. We are going to plant this church here. And they find out they are struggling for a very long time. It was Bishop Oyedeko that was saying how that there was a time that they started the church in Ghana. Living faith was blossoming, doing very well. And they started the church in Ghana and there was so much struggle. After like four, was it five years or six years or so, the increase was not there. And he was struggling everything. He said he went there by himself to preach. And still nothing worked. And he went back and said, God, what is the problem? And God said, I am not there. And he said, shut it down immediately. There are some of you from this message tonight. You need to go and shut down a lot of things in your life. Because if you check it, you will find out. There's nothing wrong if you thought it was God. You are a student in the school of the spirit. Oh, I thought this business was God. But now I'm hearing this is not God. Oh. I thought that it was God that said I should start the ministry. I remember years ago when my well friends and all of that, you know, not really close friends who meet me and say, Apostle, with the kind of grace you have, start a TV ministry. Start this. I told you about PFN. When we had our first crusade, PFN was willing to give me pastors and give me an auditorium to say, start, start a church. We need you. Be careful. Not every good thing is God. Things don't have to be bad for you to leave them. Sometimes they can be good. They are just not God. There was a time I was preparing, taking my bath years ago. I had a meeting. I don't know if it was in Kaduna or one of these places. I had prayed, fasted, prepared a powerful message. As, as I was taking my bath, all of a sudden, my peace, I will come to that, will discuss peace. Peace as one of the mysteries in the kingdom to bail men out. The stubbornness of men will not allow them understand how the peace of God works. He said he will speak peace. Peace is a voice. Peace can warn you and say you are landing in hot water. Peace can tell you, man of God, this association you are joining is what will destroy you. It doesn't mean they are fake. It doesn't mean they are not of God. But this association is what will bring down your grace. Man of God, be careful. Peace. That's why I told you that these are the systems by which the saints dominate. So you can see that you can have a dream and in your dream you saw a maker dying. But in the physical, it will never happen because there is a mystery that shields him. The dream you saw was the intention of Satan. But there is a fortification of a mystery. You can have a dream and see Joshua Selman dying in a motor accident. And start praying and say, hey, so this is how our apostle will die. <laughs> I, I guarantee you it will remain as a dream. You don't know what is covering this man that is standing. It's not pride. Do you know how many times death has tested me? Uh, make him ma, make him ma, make him Not faithful with unrighteous mammon, who shall commit to your trust the true riches of the kingdom? These are the mysteries we do ministry with. These are the mysteries by which kings rise. And you look at a man and you see the wonder that his life emits. And you are saying, My God, how is this thing working? My brothers and my sisters, these are the systems. Paul said, me who i am the least of all the apostles was this grace given that i become a communicator of the unsearchable riches i have learned these things and they have helped me they have delivered me from evil that prayer lead us not into temptation but deliver us 
one hearing from God can deliver you and deliver your children's children. Our parents went head on. Some of them were the colleagues of some of the men of God in Nigeria today. And had they continued hearing God well, they would have given us a good footing. But the inability to hear. I have seen pastors, men of God that I knew years ago. Men of fire. And seen them and their shadows of themselves. How can a man's yesterday be better than his tomorrow? Because of one of these spiritual blessings. No wisdom. Some of us have lost destiny helpers that can change our lives because of the wisdom to be given to navigate friendship. Are you ready to pray tonight? These are the keys by which we read. My brothers and my sisters, look at me. Forget about cars. Truly believe me. Forget about houses. Forget about all this fake life up and down. When you possess these things, you will tame life. It will be at your command. You will watch yourself with shock and wonder. There are about eight of these true riches. We'll preach it in a series next. I just felt in my spirit to introduce it tonight. The spiritual blessings that constitute an advantage in a believer. I like you in the next our time is gone but in the next five minutes find a corner find somewhere and cry to god i'll just allow you instrumentally just set the atmosphere for us everyone pray everyone pray Just one of all of these that I listed the grace to hear you listen I like you to cry with all your heart Lord grant me the grace I'm tired of thinking it is you when it is not you your voice be mighty upon the waters speak to me oh god concerning ministry speak to me oh god concerning family
gone, but please listen. We have just one more service for the year. Lord, activate the speakings of angels. The angel came and told Daniel, he said, I am come to give you understanding. There are angels that are sent. I like you by faith to activate their ministry. The angels, the ministering spirits, bringing accuracy, bringing direction. cleanses your ears and helps you listen listen the voice of god will take away wastage from your life wastage there are many men of god whose ministries finances have gone down because they didn't hear god they organized conferences god was not in it yes souls were saved yes lives were transformed there are many people who should not even have churches but they thought they had this is not to scare you but i'm being sincere with you happy is the man whose ears can hear the voice of god because you see we live in an arrogant society where people and their pride will mislead you away from god this our world is very proud you see people who don't know where they are going but they make you feel stupid for staying where god said you should stay and if you are not careful they will rob you of the courage to stand until you fall with them if i followed what people said if i followed what people wanted to do in my life if i followed what people wanted me to do i would have crashed in life and crashed in ministry some of us after koinonia listen i this we have one more service maximize it are we together some of us after this service you, you should go and find somewhere even if it's for one hour in the night to say lord this issue of hearing you you have to tidy this in my life everything you claim god told you by now we know he's not the one that said it don't feel ashamed but you must go back and say what is this families have died they have lost loved ones simply because people could not hear 
the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter days the spirit speaketh expressly expressly god who in sundry times and diverse manners spake to us through the prophets had in this last day spoken to us through his son the word that he has appointed heir over all things god is still speaking speaking to men and women and by speaking is not just you need to know you need to pray that god purifies your dreams some of us our dreams have been hijacked by forces let me tell you many things god wanted to tell you in dreams but there are powers that have hijacked the dreams to the point that now you don't even trust it yet dreams and visions it says i have multiplied visions i have spoken in similitudes even by the prophets these are all spiritual channels of prophetic communication let's use one more minute to speak that the blood of god the blood of jesus speaks over your dreams over your discernment and say lord i crush the voice of wickedness let there be a purification of the dreams of the vision a purification i cause manipulations of dreams and visions by the gates of hell confusing men confusing women confusing men of god confusing destinies we crush it in the name of jesus major camps christian camps in this nation that belong to the fathers of faith i've had the privilege to be there to walk around the length and breadth and being in those places i said kai it is good to hear god it's good to hear god i've seen the areas in my life where i had god and I've seen the excellency and the blessings of the results in my own life and in effect the life of others. Are we together now? We have a series. This is just an introduction. But please let me challenge you. When you go back, especially this issue of hearing God. Do you know why many people are small in our generation? I will tell you why because we follow instincts instincts brain work oh this is a b c this is e f g god does not take away your intelligence but you see a spiritual man the bible says that you do not know the wind bloweth where it listeth you cannot tell where it is going or where it is coming he says so is one who is led by the spirit You need an experience of a hearing ear and a seeing eye there are encounters i have had and god has spoken to me through them i will die believing it if i get to heaven and i find out i'm wrong i will apologize with all humility but for now they have become my convictions they drive my life there is no gate of hell that sustains the power to derail that focus because of the power of what was heard and seen if you do not hear the voice of god one day you will leave ministry if you do not hear the voice of god one day you will look at your wife and say are you sure you were supposed to be the one i'll marry or you look at your children 
you will look at your loved ones one day you will just commit suicide out of frustration but i know whom i believed and i am persuaded father tonight we thank you you have granted us access to know that there are unsearchable riches in christ there are systems of advantage that you have designed that when we walk in them our lives become invincible lord i cry tonight i have introduced this deep mystery that you have shown me to your people in the simplest form possible lord i pray that you proceed with the quickening of these teachings grant unto your dear people access even to deeper understanding of these things lord that on the strength of these truths we will rise like an edifice and bring you glory and compel our generation to do same we thank you for your grace tonight we love you for the abundance of your hand upon our lives in the name of jesus christ amen and amen thank you please be seated a few minutes and we're out of here hello beloved in christ we hope this message was a blessing to you i would want you to do something for us if you are new here kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.